Hello, I am Visnu Erchukiet, an independent researcher. My presentation today is about royal patronage, total solar eclipses, and transitory western observatories, led to the emergence of professional astronomy in Thailand. I am presenting also on behalf of my co-authors, Daruni Lingling Orchiston and Wayne Orchiston. First of all, let me give you a tour of the whole thing. The introduction will be about a very brief historical overview. Then we'll go along in a chronological order. Pre and post World War II eras give you different kinds of expeditions and participations. I see the emergence of the National Astronomical Research Institute of Thailand, or NARIT, as a sequence of events and personalities. Then I will conclude the presentation and allow time for the Q&A. The painting you see here was painted after the artist had observed the total solar eclipse of 24th October 1995 in Thailand. Our time span here is from the second half of 19th century up until today. So in 1851, Siam was ruled by King Mongkut or King Rama IV. You may have heard of his name because he is the king in the famous musical The King and I. And this king was contemporary of President Lincoln and Andrew Johnson. At that time, Siam faced colonialism from England to the west and France to the east. King Rama IV's interest in astronomy had been quite well known even before he became king, and he continued to practice astronomy after he took the throne. And it was one way of keeping the independence of the country through diplomacy, as you'll see. King Chulalongkorn or Rama V, the son of King Rama IV, was inspired by the colonies. He visited Singapore and India and came back to start building modern infrastructures in Siam, such as trains, electricity, telegraphs, making maps, and so on. Although we were not colonized, Thailand had an openness to Western influence. So we were sending Siamese students, though at first mostly royal family, abroad for education. They went to England, France, Germany, and even Russia. And these students came back to develop the country until after World War II, we had a group of local scientists who emerged from the initial foreign-educated Siamese. After World War II also, you see less colonialism and the relationship between Thailand and other countries became more of cooperations. This 18th of August, 1868, total solar eclipse is also known as King Mongkut's eclipse. The king predicted the event using his own methods, combined with his knowledge of modern astronomy, and could tell that the eclipse would last more than six minutes, and pinpointed the location where he could best observe. He invited French astronomers to come. He also sent invitations to the governor of the Strait Settlements in Singapore, with confirmations that the French astronomers and the governor would come the king ordered the construction of accommodations and observation platforms at the Eclipse Observation Site. The French expedition was led by Edouard Stéphane, the rector of Marseille Observatory. So there were two adjacent locations in Waco, one for the king and one for the French expedition, which is one kilometer south of the king's location. Wako is to the south of Bangkok, and there was no road there, so the king and everyone had to go there by boat. The observation was quite a success, and the king met the astronomers afterwards. They were talking astronomy. The details of the conversation was recorded in a report by Stéphane. 
the king took a photographer with him, Francis Jit. Considered the pioneer of photography in Siam, he was the first Siamese to take photographs of an eclipse, and we can still see one today. Although the French did a lot of observations, the major result would actually come from India, by people observing the same eclipse earlier in the day. From there, Jules Chongsan, the French astronomer, observed and co-discovered helium on the sun by spectroscopy. Unfortunately, after returning from the eclipse expedition, King Rama IV caught malaria and died. His son, Jualongkorn, who accompanied him to Wako, also contracted malaria, but survived. He succeeded his father and became King Rama V. Just seven years after the fateful eclipse of 1868, Suyam had another total solar eclipse passing through her territory. Since the event was known by astronomers in advance, King Rama V issued an invitation for Western astronomers to come and observe the eclipse in Siam. They would be hosted at his own expense to commemorate his father's love of astronomy. Remember that the king himself was with his father in 1868 at Wakaw. Henry Alabaster, a former British diplomat and the king's advisor, was assigned to attend to the astronomers' well-being while they were in Bangkok. The Royal Society in England sent a team led by Arthur Schuster. The astronomer from France was the celebrated Jules Chongsan. After their meetings with the king, the two teams of astronomers from England and France were sent to a seaside village of Bang Thalu near Chao Lai Point, where facilities had already been built for them. The location was determined by Alfred Loftus, the king's cartographer. Francis Jit, the photographer from 1868, was also assigned to help with the Royal Society's expedition team, helping them with developing photographic plates. The work of the prismatic camera proved the importance of calcium in the chromosphere and prominences. Bangkok was also on the path of totality, King Rama V himself observed with Chongsan's telescope on the palace ground, where an eclipse drawing contest was organized. Some of the drawings would be included in the Royal Society's report. Western colonialism was at its height then, and while Siam's soft diplomacy with scientific British and French subjects had given some protection, the people who had met the astronomers would go on to become major players in the country's critical interactions with colonial powers a few years later. Everyone was lucky that the eclipse came in May 1929. Had it come after the Wall Street crash, and the observation might have been very difficult to organize. The main objective at that time was to confirm Einstein's theory of general relativity. This total solar eclipse could be seen in many locations, including Siam and Malaya. In Siam, the government didn't invite astronomers, but Britain and Germany requested supports for observation expeditions. The Siamese government set up a welcoming committee that included Rear Admiral Praya Rajawangsan, C. Gamonnawin as the chairman, and Pra Sanvithanithet, Air Prakta Prajit, former instructors of astronomy in the Navy and the Survey Department, respectively. King Prachatipok or Rama VII, a son of King Jualongkorn, was not directly involved with the astronomers' activities. Yet he showed great interest in the phenomenon. Otherwise, his second visit to Patani in the far south after the first one in 1928, just one year earlier, would never have occurred. On the ship bound for Patani, the king was briefed on the eclipse by Rear Admiral Priya Rajawangsan. One day before the eclipse, the king went to the British observation station in Patani town and to the German station in Kokpo, 
around 30 kilometers away inland. After all the preparations, the day of the eclipse was so cloudy that no good results could be obtained. Professor Stratton of Cambridge University and Professor Rosenberg from Kiel University later traveled to Bangkok and gave plenary lectures at Jualongkorn University before leaving Siam. The German astronomers sent scores of photographs showing stages of site construction and of the visits by the king and the public. We have no similar record from the British astronomers. Now we come to the events after the Second World War. By this time, colonialism had effectively ended. Visits from foreign expeditions were less country-level relationships and more like affairs of government agencies. Siam was renamed Thailand in 1939, and Thailand was now a democratic country with a constitutional monarchy, King Pumipon Adunyadet, or King Rama IX. Science education became more public. Knowledge of astronomy, though not quite widespread, were present in many organizations and institutions. The solar eclipse of 20th June 1955 lasted more than seven minutes. An expedition team from Brown University, led by Professor Charles Smiley, asked the Thai government's permission to set up an observing station in the path of totality. Professor Smiley himself had visited Thailand before for the annual eclipse in May 1948. A record of the Natural History Section's meetings of the Siam Society reports that on March 31, 1948, Dr. Charles H. Smiley of the National Geographic Eclipse Expedition, Chairman of the Department of Astronomy at Brown University and Director of the LAD Observatory at Providence, Rhode Island, lectured on Eclipses, Past, Present, and Future. At first, they had been given a site in Kanjanaburi, far away to the west of Bangkok, but was later allowed to use the ground of the Royal Summer Palace in Bangpain. With this new site, the king's mother and sister were able to observe the eclipse with the Brown University team. Students from Jualongkorn University also joined the observation. Post-World War II observation equipment were much lighter than those in previous occasions. The Brown University team traveled by airplanes, while past expeditions came by ships. After the eclipse, Professor Smiley also gave a lecture at Jualongkorn University. Before the eclipse, Priya Salvita Nithet, that's the official title of Air Prakta Prajit, had given a radio broadcast explaining total solar eclipse. Afterwards, there was an article by Sengyam Pao Thong Suk describing his observation of the total solar eclipse by radio. In 1995, many things have changed since the last eclipse. Science education had been widespread. There were many science graduates from universities and many more secondary school students who study science. Most universities had science faculties. The total solar eclipse of the 24th of October 1995 had a path of totality that crossed the breadth of Thailand. Local astronomers and the public were equally excited. Groups of astronomers from abroad came to observe in large numbers. Information about solar eclipses was made available to the public. Solar filters were widely distributed and sold. Princess Sirin Thorn, who had always been enthusiastic about astronomy, was accompanied by her niece, Princess Pacharakityapa, and they observed the phenomenon in Nakhon Ratasima province, northeast of Bangkok, with assistance from Thai astronomers. 
the enthusiasm and excitement of the total solar eclipse remained in the public's mind long after the event. Subsequently, astronomical news and events became regular features in the media. The inception of the National Astronomical Research Institute of Thailand, with royal support, in the following decade, arguably had this eclipse as a catalyst. The National Astronomical Research Institute of Thailand, or NARIT, was founded in 2009. But in a wider perspective, the institute is an idea that took a long time to grow. I see its emergence as the end result of past observations and successive generations of people who contributed to the cause of astronomy in Thailand. Connectors are people who had seen a total solar eclipse once, lived to see the next one, and were instrumental in passing on the knowledge of astronomy or the interest or passion in astronomy. As you can see, the diagram shows kings and princes as well as commoners. The most important king, though, is not shown. King Mungkut, or Rama IV, was the prime mover in 1868, but died from his observation sojourn and didn't carry astronomy to the next eclipse. His son did. So we have King Rama V, who not only invited the astronomers to Siam in 1875, but passed astronomy on in the persons of Alabaster and Loftus, who used astronomy in their map-making activities. Prince Apakara, or Prince of Chumpon, was the son of King Rama V. He was born five years after the 1875 eclipse and was not an astronomer, but he was a navy man. He wrote the first modern astronomy text for use in the naval college and taught the subject. A top student of the prince was C. Kamon Nawin, also known by his later title, Raja Rajawangsan. He represented Siam in the International Hydrographic Conference in London in 1919. He rewrote the astronomy text for the Naval College and also taught the subject. He commanded the ship that took King Rama VII to see the eclipse in 1929 and briefed the king about the eclipse while on board. Another gift from King Rama V was a scholarship student to Harvard, Ab Rakta Prajit, whose later title was Praya Sanvitan Nithet, the same person in the welcoming committee in 1929 and the broadcaster in 1955. His work in the Royal Thai Survey made heavy use of astronomy. He taught astronomy in the Royal Thai Survey College. He also taught it in the engineering faculty of Jualongkorn University. And that's where Rawi Pawilai learned from Prayasalvitanithet. Rawi Pawilai became the first Thai with a PhD in astronomy. He started a tradition of formal research work in astronomy in Thailand and instructed the children of King Rama IX who have been quoted as saying that had he not assumed kingship, he wanted to become an astronomer. The king's lifelong interest in astronomy was passed on to his daughter, Princess Serin Thorn. Meanwhile, more universities in Thailand started astronomy programs. And after 1995, astronomy outreach by government agencies and NGOs such as the Thai Astronomical Society, proliferated. Bunraksa Sunthon Tham, who studied under Rawi, was the astronomer assisting Princess Serin Thorn during the total solar eclipse of 1995. In the following decade, Bunraksa would become the first director of Narit, which received full support from the princess. Siam and later Thailand, since the second half of the 19th century, was influenced by but did not succumb to Western colonialism. 
Astronomy played a role in this, for example, in King Rama IV and the 1868 total solar eclipse, where he invited French astronomers and the British governor together. Transitory observatories brought to us glimpses of modern astronomy and systematic work of scientists. These short visits created interest in astronomy and inspired the quest for scientific knowledge among the Thais. In the 19th century, the expeditions came at the king's invitations, but in the 20th century, permissions were sought by expedition teams. Local astronomy, already present in small groups, gathered momentum because of the 1929 total solar eclipse expeditions by the British and the German. The presence of visiting astronomers at Jualongkorn University led to the teaching of undergraduate astronomy there. Graduates from Jualongkorn would go on to start astronomy programs in other universities in Thailand. A total solar eclipse occurs only in specific locations on Earth, unlike other sciences where the scientists can work in a laboratory or locally. An astronomer who wishes to study the phenomenon must travel to places where totality can be observed. In this way, they take their science to the world. In Thailand, no other science had experienced the kind of activities that professional astronomers from Western nations gave when they came to observe total solar eclipses. And it's also true that no other science had enjoyed Thai royal interest and support as much as astronomy. The development of the discipline of astronomy in Thailand was possible due to the confluence of these factors. Western astronomers setting up transitory observatories to observe a total solar eclipse and king, princes and princesses who appreciate and support astronomy. That has been how professional astronomy got its start in Thailand. That's the end of my presentation, and here is a list of further reading for you.